for joining us and finding out in the world of video games. And today we're going to begin that slow, painful process of closing the door on the current generation of gaming consoles. And as we're starting to do that, we, we see the PS5, the Xbox Series X, they're on their way in a matter of months. And I'm realizing I have a, I have a stack of games that I have not finished. And some maybe are only 10 to 25% done. If this not. one's still in a shrink wrap, so he obviously never That's even got a chance to, to live. Unfortunately, I, I remember buying Luigi's Mansion 3 with the best of intentions, and I don't know what happened. I got to around about the fourth floor on it, and something changed. Uh, Animal Crossing, that's what it was. And speaking of that, I think I have. I need to buy my turnips before I run out of time on I that mean, one. I mean, we could probably finish the video and then go back and get the turnips. I or, I mean, could. if we needed to, Maybe. we could even just go back in time. No, no, we will not. I will not be the one responsible for breaking the space-time continuum I and creating some horrible Flashpoint-style universe where oh. we're the animals and our pets are playing some weird version of People Crossing, and they're the ones that are buying all focus. of the turnips. Just focus for a second here, okay? I don't think it's a good idea for you to play Animal Crossing right, you know, before bedtime anymore. Clearly, I have some weird dreams, but we're, oh, that's right. Okay, so getting back into <laughs> forgotten and abandoned games, whole worlds that were counting on me to save them. Characters that I promised I was going to help them save the day, and now they're just they're still they're sitting here and they're they're probably wondering when am I going to come back from my gaming walkabout to finish what we had started, and I want to I really do, and maybe I don't know maybe it's just me, but it can be so hard to start playing a game that you haven't touched in months or in some cases in years. It's it's just easier to start fresh with another game and leave that one to to just slowly gather dust on the shelf. I mean, think about it. all the cool moves that I've previously mastered, I've, I've long since forgotten now, and to be honest, half the time I can't even remember what I was doing or where I was trying to go. I'm going to have to retrace my steps, and that's going to probably create significant backtracking just so I can get my bearings again. I mean, why should I spend my incredibly limited gaming time to remember what I was doing when I could just start with something else fresh and new? Yeah, I, I totally know what you mean. I, mean. I love the feeling of starting a new game with new controls to learn, an exciting story to experience, and a fresh world of opportunity to explore. I don't even mind the mind-numbing tutorials that often accompany the beginning of my journey because it is all just a precursor of what is patiently awaiting for me on the other side, new uncharted territory to conquer. But, you know, doing it all over again a second time, it just seems easier and a lot more fun to start something else from scratch rather than to try to rebuild on top of the ashes of some very old save file. And in our personal lives, this exact same concept plays out with identical frustrations and challenges. Sometimes it's just, it's easier to quit, whether it's a job or maybe you're, where you're at in school, or walk away from a relationship or even even give up on our calling from God after we experience some game-breaking setbacks, some roadblocks, or some failures. Each of us throughout our lives will find reasons to wonder why God allows such setbacks to occur in the first place. I mean, if God knew that these things were coming, why wouldn't he just prevent them from ever happening? The concept of rebuilding typically stands on the foundation of experiencing a substantial loss that necessitates a do-over. Personally, I find this process can be very frustrating as it feels inefficient, reflects poor time management, and seems like a waste of resources. What is the point of rebuilding something that already existed? I mean, couldn't it have simply been protected or preserved so that the loss wouldn't occur? Losing is painful enough to injure. It almost seems insulting to have to pick up the pieces of the board game after they were just callously knocked mm -hmm. off the table by the classroom bully. But yet we find this thing peppered throughout Scripture as God's people frequently found themselves in the rebuilding process, sometimes through their own fault, but oftentimes because of events that occurred beyond their control maybe even before their birth. And such is the scene we find in one of the most epic reclamation projects found in the Bible, the rekindling of the heartbeat of Israel under the leadership of Nehemiah. To do justice to the level of rebuilding that is about to occur, we need to fill in the backdrop of the scene. Many years prior, the nation of Israel was overthrown and enslaved by the neighboring Assyrians and Babylonian armies, and the incredible cities that King David and King Solomon built had been ransacked and burned to the ground. Jerusalem, the capital, was left in shambles, with the walls torn down and everything of value looted. 
This is a truly post-apocalyptic setting with only small groups of survivors left to survive in the shell of this once proud city of global importance. Now enters Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah was not a descendant of the royal family, nor was he an obvious choice for leadership when we find him. He's simply the cupbearer to the king, a position that placed him in proximity to power, but reminded him daily of his status as a descendant of a subjugated nation. Nehemiah receives an unfavorable report on the condition of his countrymen as well as the city of Jerusalem and immediately goes to battle as a man of God should, on his knees in prayer. Unbeknownst to Nehemiah, he has just entered phase one of the Jerusalem rebuilding project. His position may not have seemed to lend itself to a major role on the nation building committee, but Nehemiah refused to disqualify himself from the burden he was carrying simply because of his name badge. That's right. When the king asked him what was on his mind, Nehemiah pulled no punches and he explained the dire situation of his home country and his desire to be part of the solution. Now, mind you, Nehemiah had no resources or credentials to support his desire to rebuild. As a matter of fact, his mere request could have been considered treasonous. But this was an appointment that had been anointed by the Lord, and the king responded with a level of support that is quite honestly hard to fathom giving him access to resources, giving him permission, these letters that were provided to him in order to give him safe passage there. He was given everything he needed from the king in order to be able to, to at least begin on this project. Everything Nehemiah requested had been granted. A leave of absence from work, letters of authorization, supplies from the Federal Reserve, and even a detachment of soldiers to protect him. Looks like another happy ending is in order. Cue the 90s sitcom ending theme song and a group high five frozen in the air. Well, but unfortunately, Nehemiah chapter 2 ends with some ominous foreshadowing of the adversaries who lie ahead. So maybe that's a little premature celebration. No rebuilding project worth doing will ever exist without the resurgence of opposition. In this case, it had been willing to lie dormant as long as the renovations were nothing more than a pipe dream. As soon as you're ready to put your hand to the plow, you're all of a sudden going to find these adversaries who you didn't even know existed and often appear to have no real valid reason to oppose you, and such is the case here, as these three men stand up to mock Nehemiah's efforts, falsely accuse him of improper motives, and all along the way do everything in their power to distract him from completing his mission. Have you ever set your mind to doing the right thing, only to have the enemies appear out of the clear blue nowhere just to make an already Herculean task even more difficult? Well, take the advice of Nehemiah, a man who has been there. Just keep on building and stay focused on the Lord. Throughout the project, Nehemiah endured setbacks, assassination attempts, threats, and intimidation, but it was all for the purpose just like the rebuilding of the walls in the city itself was. So now we can return to our original question. Why does God allow us to lose things if we're simply going to rebuild them again in the future? And it is through the story of Nehemiah that we find the answers. It is through the act of rebuilding that the people of Israel here were brought back together, both in heart as well as in body. It was this process of rebuilding that brought them back into a place of obedience to the Lord and initiated a rebirth of their commitments to his ways. It unified them, but it also purified them. And it made them a family. They fully embraced their relationships with each other and with the Lord. And all that they had once took for granted was now appreciated in a whole new light as they all got to participate in this rebuilding process. The easy choice is clearly to cut bait and run. But doing so would mean that you never achieve the satisfaction of seeing the fruit of your labors and the sense of completion shared with all those who have fought to good fight alongside with you. The choice to reload and rebuild is never a comfortable one but it's often the one that provides the most reward, and it gives God the glory for the result. Whatever has been torn down in your life, whether it is from the enemy, such as the walls of Jerusalem, whether it's through events outside of your control, like maybe a server error that made all of your, your save files crash, because we, we've all had that before, or perhaps it's a mistake of your own, maybe like accidentally overriding the wrong save, and then you, you got to start over from two hours into the game. deleting everything done that a couple of times. But regardless of how it happened, there is a rebuilding solution. It will be arduous work, and it may feel like you are treading old ground when you could be blazing a new path, but the rebuilding process itself is a destination, not merely a journey. It is when we endure and persevere through these setbacks that we prove the level of our commitment to God, to ourselves as well as to all those around us. 
don't give up in the middle of your rebuilding process. You are already closer to the other side than you think. Ooh.